Today is Sunday, September the 8th, 2024. These are the news making the headlines. Welcome to Lynx 7 TV News Report, providing you with the best in local and international news updates. This is a place where you can get the most reliable and informative news information. Lynx 7 TV News Report. Welcome back and thanks for joining us. 18-year-old charge after fatal stabbing in Manchester. The police have arrested and charged the 18-year-old teenager accused of fatally stabbing a 50-year-old man in Top Coffee Grove near Porus in Manchester on Saturday, August 31. The teenager now identified as Sharon Rowe, a bartender of the community reportedly fled the scene after the incident. Sources said that her family fled their home shortly after as well after receiving death threats. Rowe is now charged with the murder of 50-year-old Fitzroy Wilson, a farmer from the community. Reports are that at around 8 p.m., Rowe and Wilson had an argument which Rowe used a knife to stab Wilson. He later collapsed while Rowe fled the scene. Rowe was later arrested by the police after reportedly confessing to the crime during an interview. It is further reported that her family had to flee the community after receiving death threats. Continuing the news, Blake gets back ahead of Clarendon College schoolboy football campaign. Reggae Boys captain and goalkeeper Andrew Blake has committed $500,000 to his alma mater Clarendon College fund, which will be used to help renovate the football field at the renowned establishment. The donation was made in presence of the principal David Wilson and members of the Dacosta Cup team during a special handover event at the institution. Blake's contribution was made possible through Sajikor Foundation and Supreme Ventures Foundation. The $500,000 will go towards improving the school sports facilities, which are currently in need of attention ahead of the fast approaching schoolboy football season. The initiative kickstarted by Clarendon's College Class of 1983 in collaboration with Alumni Association aims to raise additional funds through a GoFundMe campaign. In the meantime, Clarendon College defending the Costa Cup champion edged Dembe High School two goals to one on Saturday in their opener for the Rural Schoolboy 2024-2025 season. Continuing the news, the GoFundMe page that was launched six days ago to raise funds for a long-term care of gospel dancehall artist Lieutenant Stitchy. Some 268 donations have been received so far. The campaign was launched by Lieutenant Stitchy's wife, Sophia Leng, who revealed that the artist has suffered a severe brain hemorrhage that has left him unresponsive, where he can receive rehabilitative care. Stitch is one of Jamaica's most prolific entertainers, whether in dancehall or gospel. He started his recording in 1983 and got his big break in 1987 with his song Wear Your Size and his album which was the monster hit of the same name album he recorded for producer King Jamie. Continuing the news, British woman remanded on drug charges again. A British resident, Rachel Quayle, who was accused of attempting to export more than 45 million worth of cocaine from Jamaica, was again remanded when she appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Friday. Quayle is to return to court on September 13. The 28-year-old is before the court on charges of possession, dealing in, attempting to export, and conspiracy to export cocaine. She was arrested and charged after 21 pounds of cocaine reportedly found in her luggage at the Sangsa International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James, Jamaica. Allegations are that on August 21st, Quail attempted to board a flight destined for the United Kingdom when her luggage was searched. During the search, 9.5 kilograms of cocaine were found concealed in an assortment of food items. Quail was taken into custody and following further investigation, she was charged following an interview in the presence of her attorney. Quail was taken into custody and following further investigation, she was charged following an interview in the presence of her attorney. The drug had a reported street value of 45 million Jamaican dollars. Continuing the news, female firefighter crushed to death in motor vehicle crash. A 23-year-old firefighter died from injuries she sustained in a motor vehicle collision in Angel St. Catherine. The deceased has been identified as Shaheen Nelson, who was employed to the Jamaica Fire Brigade Kingston and St. Andrew Branch. Reports on the traffic department are that Nelson was driving home on Friday around 10 p.m. when the vehicle she was operated collided in a tractor trailer that was traveling the opposite direction. The injured woman was rushed to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. 
her death has left members of the Jamaica Fire Brigade in shock. We'll have more details to come on this in a later newscast. Continuing the news. Manchester double murder suspect killed in shootout with police. A man suspected to have been involved in Tuesday's double murder in Albion, Manchester, was fatally shot in a neighboring community of Newlands during an alleged confrontation with the police on Saturday morning. The man, whose formal identity has not yet been known, was labeled as a troublemaker by residents. Preliminary reports are that at around 5.30 a.m., police went in search of the suspect at a house when they were fired on. The gunfire was returned and during the ensuing gun battle, the man was fatally shot. A resident of the community gave his account of what happened. You know, from the last four months back, we're having some problem with this guy personally and my old lady my old man is passed by now and my sister she's the owner of the house mm -hmm. and we have a problem with one of our brother who bring this criminal in our yard mm -hmm. them keep saying he's my brother's son i don't know him from nowhere and my sister them we live next we live together and we them don't know him eventually this guy coming at the house my brother bring him to the yard and him in the house and me make report two time by the station and the police them come and them do what them ever them have to do and eventually we never know so him have a gun behind the scene so eventually now when we make the report my brother supposed to make the report back to the court because he have a court going on and he never report to the court okay. we go by the court tuesday this week of this week and he never come because he find out say the police them might hold him because the police when we make the report by the station because we have a paper with the police and give me from the station can make the report can we get threat by him and my brother in the yard because my sister is supposed to do some work and in building and he can't get to do it and them, them keep sending threat to my sister and I say all right one way to clear it and know that the police them come and destroy him mm -hmm. yeah and the family feel comfortable and the community feel more comfortable because everybody in the community is like them and fear of this guy I mean the yard I don't know him I don't know him from nowhere a family member said that his relatives struggled to get the suspect to vacate a family property leading to a land dispute which is now before the court. The man who was killed by the police was a suspect in the murder of two men who were shot and another injured at a bar in Bottom Albion, Manchester on Tuesday night. In that incident, the police named the deceased man as Kalu Stas, otherwise called Rasta, and a 29-year-old resident of Albion who goes by the name Henry Brown, otherwise called Iceman, age 44, who were both shot dead and another man injured during the gun attack. The police said that at around 9.20 p.m., a gunman entered the bar and opened gunfire on the three men. An eyewitness said that the gunman grabbed a bag which reportedly had $100,000 from one of the victims and other items from the bar before fleeing the scene on foot in the area. The police were called and on their arrival, three men were found suffering from what appears to be gunshot wounds. Two of the men were pronounced dead while the other one was admitted. Continuing the news. Concern grows as 13-year-old girl reported missing. An Ananda alert has been activated for 13-year-old Kaylee Taylor of Highgate St. Mary who has been missing since Friday, September the 3rd. She is of dark complexion, same built and about 163 centimeters or 5 feet 4 inches tall. Reports from the Highgate police are that at around 5.20 p.m., Kaylee was last seen in the Richmond Park area in the parish. Her mood of just at the time she went missing is unknown. All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Kaylee Taylor is being asked to contact the Highgate Police at 876-992-2233, the Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Continuing the news. 14-year-old gone missing in Central Village, St. Catherine. An Ananda alert has been activated for 14-year-old Nikera Pennicott of High Biscus Avenue, Windsor Heights, Central Village, St. Catherine, who has been missing since August 23rd. Nikera is of light complexion, medium built, and about 5 feet 1 inches tall. Reports from the Central Village Police are that at around 6.30 a.m., Nikera was last seen at home wearing a pink tube top and black tights. She has not been seen or heard from since. All efforts to contact her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Nikera Pennicott is being asked to contact the Central Village Police at 876-907-9504, the Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. 
continue in the news. Three people lost their life after a taxi slammed into a truck on Brunswick Avenue in Spanish Town. Three people are dead following a crash involving a taxi along Brunswick Avenue in Spanish Town St. Catherine on Saturday afternoon. The incident occurred around 3.30 p.m. when a taxi driver reportedly lost control of a Nissan AD wagon motor car and rear end a truck loaded with sand near a stoplight at Mokai Land according to preliminary police report. The male driver of the car and two female passengers died on the scene. The crash took place less than 24 hours after firefighter Shaheen Nelson was killed in a two-vehicle collision in the Brunswick Avenue area. The identities of those who were killed in the crash have not yet been released by the police up to the publication of this report. Links to below 7 TV though will continue to track this story and have more details to come in a subsequent newscast.